Okay, we zijn, we zijn in de film op de Diek Dickensen. Die is hier al vaker geweest en die heeft gevraagd hoe die nou deze keer weer hier terecht kwam. Uh, how many times have you been in Amsterdam? Uh, many times, but I haven't been here for about four years. What's the last time you were here? What band were you with? The last time I was here was with the Untamed Youth in 96. And then David Duke also played here in 96, a few months earlier. They played in the two things, right? Exactly. And next time when you're going to come back, I heard, do you consider playing in the cruise in again? We'll go anywhere we'll pay. We're, we're easy like that. Nice to know. And Anton Duke, I really like that band. It's a lot different, or quite different from the band that you can get in the Echophonic. Are you still playing with them? Well, we're available, but, uh, you know, we're not really playing because we live in four different parts of the USA. So whenever anybody wants to get the Anton Duke, you know, I'll quote some crazy amount of money because we have to buy a plane ticket and all this kind of nonsense. I was happy I found the complete of the Untamed Youth in a really small record store in Italy. Like, no. New but cheap. I, I found some Untamed Youth uh, albums at a garage sale for a dollar. That is that not to do? It made, made me feel like I'd actually made it. You're a musician. You don't do anything else but play that guitar, do you? Well, I, I sing and I, I look real good for the ladies. Being a bald-headed rockabilly is kind of like rocking a bar with no beer. Something happens. Being a bald-headed rockabilly is like being a porno star with no cock. You also have a recording studio. Yeah, I have a recording studio in my house. What kind of bands do you like, uh, like pick the bands to record them? Is that a big screening process or is it just anything that gives you money? Well, I have my own record label. And the stuff that I do, it's called Echophonic Records, strangely enough. And um, the band from Echophonic, I record them, and I, obviously I'll choose them because I like them. But then, basically anybody who pays money can record them. The only problem is I'm on the road all the time, so I'm hardly ever in Los Angeles. But uh, I've done you know, a bunch of albums with the band, did albums with the Raging Queens, and Big Kennedy Slide the Boys did their instrument. They're so yeah, yeah. Phantom Papers and Davy Allen did the Skater Hater album, uh, you know, it's all different kinds of music. How about Davy Allen? Is he still, like, why doesn't he come with you and play? Did he play? He, he never comes. He's been here one time. I think he's really un underrated. Well, he's, he's a great musician and a great guy. The only problem is he's like the shyest guy I've ever met. I mean, he, when he plays, he just stands there on stage, like in one spot, you know, it's like he's just scared to death. Hey, would you say your, your recording studio is something special when it comes to the equipment that you use? Is that collected or is it just new shit? It, it, it's all old stuff from the 50s. and some stuff that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars back in the 50s, but there's so much of it in Los Angeles, you know, that I was able to pick it up very quickly. For vintage reasons or for the sound, but just because it was cheap? <laughs> well, it was for vintage reasons and for sound and because it was cheap. You don't start, you're not from California, you're from the South, but... Well, I'm from Missouri. It's Missouri. It's barely in the South. It's almost... You don't speak so Southern. I can if, if you want me. Yeah, do that, that sounds good. Why do hillbillies love Halloween? I don't know. Because they punk in. Nasty book. Well, you used to a song about doing something with a pig. One of my girlfriends heard about it and she got really shocked. Was that true or did she just misremember it? Doing something with a pig? Doing something stubborn with a pig? No, no, not me. I only do northern things with pigs. You're he... That's no bad doing. <laughs> What's that? You're here now because you have an ETV out with the Equifonics. I went to the wrong store now. I didn't it because I didn't have any money to buy it. Good story. No, it's very, very good. It's a good CD. Um, it's harder for me to make more powerful. Is that on purpose or you just grew into that? It's just, you know, an extension of this band being around the two years. After two years, you just start sounding like that, you know? Well, because a girl I know heard you at Vegas and she said you sounded kind of lame. She heard you now and she said it sounded really, like, really powerful. Better. Do you think that yourself as well? <laughs> Very lame. You don't sound lame. Oh. Do that on purpose to get more girls? 
I'll do whatever it takes to get my girl. How many girls do you get? You were in Belgium last night. Did you go to Belgium, bro? You know what? The only problem I found, I love Europe. You know, I love the, the, the people. I love the food. I love the beer. You don't like armpit hair. No, that's, that's not a problem. But my biggest problem with Europe, every good-looking girl has a boyfriend. I mean, there's not a single girl out there. Maybe it's like more girls here than girls or something like that? I don't know. But I, I have to go to Canada. That's good for girls. You have to find somewhere but not so many guys. Right. Well, I think the in America is good for that. There's a lot of single girls. Try the internet. I looked at this rock and roll dating That's bad. You can get some girls there. No. You do internet and stuff like that. You have a website? Well, we have a website. You do that interesting content for www.www.com. Well, <laughs> and the other bands and about your past or beat them both by other guy, they've stuck it. Is there anything that we can expect if we really don't know what the f***ing is or? No, really, we talked about the University album, but it's like, I don't know when that's going to happen. It's a f***ing thing. You've got to turn on your records with a lot of, like, people who are influenced you. Yeah, they're my heroes. I've been the most well-known heroes, but they're heroes of mine. People like... Joe D'Ambrose, who played tenor sax for Bill Haley in the comics, played on Rock Around the Clock. He played on our first two CDs. And Claude Vermeer, the Buckley Premier, that originally did Poontang, he came and did a production for Poontang. Uh, you guys have the Beverly Hillbillies over here? No, we don't have them, but we know You know about them? It's a lame movie from five years ago, but the tell you from back in the 60s. I got the guy with the Beverly Spoon song to the uh, version with lyrics that I wrote all about me. It was very exciting for me. Because I grew up, I grew up, I grew up watching that show, you know, and all of a sudden, here's that guy's voice, you know. No, it's like, you say goodbye to Duke and all his friends. And it's that goosebump, you know. The one we've been working on for years, fellow Missourian, Chuck Berry. And um, it, he's such a weird guy. I, I have a high school teacher who's friends with him. And he actually comes to my old high school and he, and he teaches poetry. Like once a year, he'll come and he'll like, like do it like a poetry lecture. But it's amazing. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. So she's friends with him, and she keeps talking to him, like, I want you to play on, you know, Deke's an old student of mine. I want you, like, to play the guitar on one song. And then he says he'll do it, then he says he won't do it. You know, he's just a really weird guy. So I don't really, I don't expect it to ever happen, but that's what I've been trying to get for years. Doesn't he have, like, a theme park in the park? Back in the 60s, he he Still there. Well, it was on his, you know, his estate, you know, his mansion and everything. It's all just in ruins now. Maybe you could go be maintenance man or something over there to do it on that. I don't have the time for that. It's huge. You normally have this, like, um, guitar for really uh, fast people, the double one. <laughs> A guitar with two legs. Right. What's the name of that guitar? Well, it's with the TN Custom Double Neck. It was made in 1959 by a guy that worked with Moserite. It's basically the same as the Moserite Double Neck that Larry Collins and Joe Mathis used back in the 50s, like back in the Collins kids. And I wouldn't come over here tonight, except that Air France lost it. It's somewhere between here and Paris. So I'm, I'm trying not to lose my cool. Guy in custom just playing it. <laughs> I, I had some bad dreams last night, but like, you know, they they took the double neck out and put like some modern heavy metal guitar in there and like pinned it on its way and like kept the double neck and. I thought it got stuck together because it was so warm in the plane and they cut it in half. I, I was out all kinds of nightmares last night about that. Because every picture I know of you that I've seen has you with the guitar. I mean, that thing must be your baby. Well, it has my name on on it, so you know, like when people look at it, they don't say. Who's that bald guy? Willie Mathis guitar. Yeah, they actually, oh, it must be Pete Dickerson, because that's what the guitar says, you know. You say a lot about, like, bald, um, bald, being bald and being rockabilly and hacker, and is that really something that bothers you? Or you you're afraid people are going to make fun of you, so you do it both? No, I mean, my experience is found, and maybe you can uh, agree or disagree, that, that when women find baldness, they're really sexy. <laughs> 